guys and welcome back. Men in Black 3 was once again directed by Barry Sonnenfeld, came out in 2012 and stars Tommy Lee Jones, Will Smith, Josh Brolin, and Jermaine Clement. And it follows a blockoladite named Boris the Animal who breaks out of prison and vows to take revenge on Agent K by time traveling to the year 1969 and killing his younger self and presenting him from shielding the Earth from a full-scale Bacchylodite attack. And Agent J stops at nothing to set things right with the timeline and save K. Okay, let's get into the positives. Once again, Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith, I like the way they play their characters just like the, in the first two. The only downfall I have is Tommy's absence, which I'll get to that in the negatives later. But Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones did a really excellent job. Once Jay travels back to 1969, there's a younger K, and he's played by Josh Brolin. This is the second film I actually seen him in. First one being Jonah Hex. I thought he did a really good job. He's more mellow. Things has happened to this man that made him the way he is when he's older, when he's Tommy Lee Jones. All these things come into play in this, and it happens to him when he's young. So Josh Brolin played that part off really well. Josh Brolin did a really excellent job as young K. And the chemistry between him and Will was about the same as Tommy and Will. Only Josh Brolin played a younger K, so he's more lively. He was serious, but at the same time, Will is trying to get acclimated to all this. He's in a different timeline. K was not as grouchy, of course, and he's more adaptable. You get the kind of disgruntled partnership between Will and him. Will is like wanting to get to the bottom of things. <laughs> and then he just gets like really frustrated. And it was pretty funny. It was just as funny as Tom Lee Jones and Will Smith together. My granddaddy always said, if you got a problem that you can't solve, it helps to get out of your head. Pie, it's good. Pie? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? We've been doing smart stuff. We've been following clues, doing real police work. It might be time we do something stupid. Mm. Something that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. I, you know what? Now I want some pie, Kay. I want some pie. Let's go get some dumbass pie. The villain, played by Jermaine Clement, Boris the Animal. I thought he was pretty badass. Definite improvement over the last film's villain. I thought he brought a seriousness to it. The way he looked, you don't really actually see his true form until like the very end, but that's for like maybe two seconds. But it was done really well. And the way he wears those glasses gave you that mystery about him. It's like, what is this thing? It's a Bacchylodite, but you don't actually see its true form. Not like you did with the bug in the first and the Kylothian in the second. You sense more evil out of him. And he was more focused. You get a sense of what he's trying to accomplish with his evil plan. Let's rewrite history, shall we, Kang? The cinematography and lighting was done really well. The music was good. The practical effects, like in the last one, was done really well. It looked real. There was some CGI moments, but it wasn't unwatchable. All right, let's get into the negatives. As I mentioned before, Jones's absence. It was plausible for what the story was telling. I get it, but it just wasn't the same because you don't get much of Tommy Lee Jones except for like the first act and like the last five minutes of the movie. That's it. It was a little bit of a bummer, but considering what the story was telling, I get it. But still, I wanted more of Tommy Lee Jones along with Will Smith. I really missed that. The plot was all over the place. I gotta tell you, this film was where the Men in Black storyline continuity just went all the trash. Half of the entire first act didn't make any sense whatsoever. Certain things happen that prevents other things that happen in the first two. So if this happened here, how the hell could the first film happen at all? The continuity was just garbage. I guess you could think of this film in another sense as a reboot, but it was really a sequel. But Still, the continuity in this film did not make any sense whatsoever. This film deals with time travel. If one thing happens, another thing can't, which made no sense. And Frank the Pug wasn't even in it. Damn, that was a bummer too. It didn't say what happened to that dog. The most you got of it was a picture of him in the background on the wall of Agent K's apartment. 
And the one guy, they reduced them down back to side characters, kind of like how they were in the first one. I didn't like that either. I, I thought they were a crucial part of the second one. But I guess the filmmakers are like, well, let's just throw them aside. Don't even show Frank the Pug, except for a picture in the background. Whatever. Even though all the negatives I threw out was sound, it wasn't terrible. I'm not going to give it a bad, bad rating, but it's going to get a little bit of a lower rating than the last one. So, Men in Black 3 gets a C+. Like I said, it's not a bad film, but it does not hold up to the original two. Especially because of that continuity crap. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, get reputized, share. What did you think of Men in Black 3? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know and comment down below and give me your thoughts. Stay tuned for my review of Minimum International coming to you soon. Peace to Ripout.